My name is uh, Iftahi and Amit, and today we're going to talk about cybercrime. I had to put this um, just because someone forced me, so you can't read this. Uh, it's like in font two or something. This is the hacker me, all right? This is not the business me. I actually wear suits sometimes, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and this has nothing to do with what I'm actually working and doing, uh, so don't blame me or uh, attribute this to in any shape or form to my professional work. This is what we're going to talk about. Uh, I'm going to start by blabbering off about myself for like 60 seconds. Uh, we're going to talk about cyber war, attack and defense, cyber crime attack and defense, um, and then we're going to try to connect them. You should have done some homework before coming in here, or uh, if you haven't, I highly recommend you to, to do that after this talk, which is to see my DEF CON 17 talk, uh, because this is like a post text to what we found there. Uh, so what gives me the right to be here? I still haven't figured it out. Um, I have computer science education, and that's it. I'm not a CISSP uh, or uh, any other certification. Uh, I'm a hacker. I'm a researcher. I used to manage research for a few security companies focusing on uh, cyber crime, malware, uh, network forensics, and stuff like that. Uh, I used to manage development, so I've been on that side too of trying to build software rather, to, rather than break it. And in my whatever spare time that I have, I do some reserve duty for the Israel Air Force uh, on, again, cyber stuff. I'm going to say a lot of cyber today um, because there's just not other terms to um, that work. I'm really going to try for this. What's that? Be... It's me belt Turkish. Oh, Tommy, there's a gun in your trousers. What is a gun doing in your trousers? For protection. Protection from what? From the Germans. <laughs> yeah. If you do catch me fucking around and, and just, just throwing FUD, uh, throw st something at me so I'll know I'm, I'm wrong, and please, please shout, because I can't hear everyone from here. And if you got anything to say, if you want to go bullshit or something, just so stand up and, and say it. Uh, I'll be more than happy to amend this presentation and add info in, into it or, or remove info from it as needed. So a quick recap. Uh, this talk is basically, uh, wouldn't be here if it was for my research uh, from last year. Last year I talked about, I was, I was doing some research on cybercrime and I tried to figure out how it works from behind the scenes. Be beyond the technology, beyond the malware and the polymorphism and the, um, I'm gonna wait with, with the, with the A-bomb. Um, and all the technical stuff just to see how it works from behind the scenes. Who is commissioned to write the software? Who's commissioned to run it? Uh, how does money get uh, transferred between those entities? How an actual criminal organization is being managed? And this is where we kind of left off uh, from last year where we found, I'm sorry about the projection, it's a little dark, but um, what you should see here um, are some documents that we found on a criminally operated server that we somehow managed to get access to. Again, watch the talk from last year. Uh, that really didn't have a lot of commercial sense. Uh, if you're talking about cybercrime, you're always talking about how to make money. Well, you can't really sell this in the open market. Uh, these are uh, maps that are, were in a presentation, in a PowerPoint presentation, denoting uh, fighter target positions with their GPS coordinates uh, on a satellite view. Um, this is like a schedule for something. Um, you, you can probably read it out later on, on the slides. And a lot of stuff that shouldn't have been really out there. And I consider this out there because the way we got access to that criminal server is, is horrendously stupid. All right? It's just like having it on the internet, which, which is how it was. Um, this is finally declassified, so I don't have to skip through it like really quickly. Um, that's a, a software that, again, was accessible or was stolen uh, by this criminal organization. Uh, that software manages a air scenery, whatever, um, situation uh, for militaries that control, and, and it controls like the 
uh, bombing and whatever. It, it's, it's got a lot of nifty stuff uh, that shouldn't be out there. Um, but again, finally uh, declassified. When I get some more information, uh, track back the, the DEF CON 17 talk. It's a lot of fun. And at that point where we, where we saw that kind of information on that server, we got hungry. Uh, well, at least I got hungry. And one of my uh, conclusions from last year's talk was, well, maybe we should try to kind of low jack some of the information or low jack the server itself because it kept moving. Which we actually did. We kind of fingerprinted the, uh, the different files and the different data that, that was on the server and trying to figure out where it's going to pop up. And it popped up. And this is why we're all, we're all here. Uh, and I can talk in DEF CON again about beyond cybercrime or where does cybercrime cyber connect to beyond just the uh, economic th uh, side of things. So in order to do those connections, and the title is Cyber Crime War Connecting the Dots, first let's visit what's cyber crime or cyber war. What is this? Raise of hands. Bullet hole. Excellent. This is what we're dealing with on a daily basis. Why am I saying this? Because you don't know what that bullet hole relates to. Is it part of a gangbang shootout in the streets of whatever, Detroit? Or is it bullet hole in, in some armored vehicle that was shot in the battlefield? We're dealing with the little fragments, with the little incidents, technical incidents all the time, with the malware, with the exploit, with the vulnerability. And in this talk, I'm going to try and do that zoom out and kind of take a look at the whole scenery, all right? Try to figure out if this belongs to cybercrime or cyber war and what is really the connection between these two. So I was kind of looking at the definitions and, uh, and what is cybercrime and cyber or war uh, versus crime. And the bottom line is that it's not that different. It might have a little different financing, but it's still heavily financed. Uh, management is a little different, but again, there's a lot of management, a lot of hierarchy, a lot of structure into how those things are, are being done. And when you go and look up what cyber war is, the Wikipedia definition, which I'm going to bash through this uh, through the next 50 minutes, says cyber warfare, all knows as blah, 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 is the use of computers and the internet in conducting warfare in cyberspace. Now, this definition is all nice and, and dandy, but, but again, it's missing a, a critical thing from my perspective, which, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Uh, and if you're here in the US, you probably know this guy that was quoted saying, there is no cyber war. Who's this? Shmiri, right. Um, it might have been a poor you know, a slip of the tongue. It might have been politics or whatever it is. Uh, and there's always someone saying, well, there's no cyber war except uh, uh, when it happened in Estonia or, uh, you know what, maybe Georgia uh, or India, Google, Adobe. I mean, there's always an exception and there's always someone that tries to break out of that mold um, because there isn't really a, a solid definition of what cyber war is and how to treat it in the modern day and age. And what we're going to try and do here is really make the connections between the dots, uh, really do connect the dots. Uh, we're going to look at some past events, cyber war events, and try to figure out where they came from, what was the MO, and how do, thing, how do these things connect in the global, uh, in the global perspective. Uh, cyber war is not only state versus state. All right. It's not only you know Kremlin versus DC. Uh, it's neither just spy versus spy. All right. There's a whole area for uh, cyber espionage, which does happen all the time. And from my perspective, cyber espionage is the pretext of of war. It's countries preparing for war. Therefore, they're conducting espionage on an active level uh, to make sure that they're going to be ready when the actual war war is going to happen. And just like any war civilian targets are going to be hit, all right? There's, there's going to be collateral damage at cyber war as well. We're not just talking about taking down a SCADA system here uh, or, or taking down uh, some military system over there, all right? We're talking about carpet bombing, DDoSing civilians, 
Um, and just like any war, propaganda and, and public image is also a big, big thing of it. There's been a lot of talk about cyber war, and I'm just going to quote or, or steal some stuff from McAfee with, with permission, of course. Uh, this is McAfee's uh, virtual criminology report from 2009, uh, where they kind of pointed out the countries developing advanced offensive cyber capabilities. Uh, they named five different countries, uh, including the US, France, Russia, China, and Israel. Small country, the, the little dot in here, can't even see it. Uh, but size doesn't matter. Trust me. <laughs> in this talk, um, I, I do believe McAfee and I do believe that France has a lot of uh, offensive capabilities until the, the Germans come over. Um, in this talk, <laughs> um, <laughs> in this talk, though, I'm going to talk about uh, all those countries minus France plus Iran because they, they have been a little more active, as you probably know in this whole cyber thingy uh, that everyone wants, likes, likes to talk about. Uh, and again, size doesn't matter. Uh, we're the smallest, but the biggest. Um, so without further ado, let's cover like, those five countries really quickly and then move over to the criminal side. So this is it, the US. Um, not a lot of secrets to kind of unveil because everything is fairly well documented. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on around cyber war. If you've been at the, at the Meet the Feds talk yesterday, you've heard the number of open jobs that DOD and the Air Force and, and STRACOM have for, uh, for cyber warriors or, or experts or whatever you want to call them. Uh, they're recruiting massively, okay? Setting up uh, STRATCOM, for example, with General uh, Keith Alexander, if I'm not mistaken, uh, heading this joint effort from all the military sides as well as the NSA and stuff like that. Uh, the usual suspects, uh, NSA, uh, the best TLA ever that I saw here was CAT. Anyone knows what CAT is? No? Oh, come on. You should see the logo. It, it's kind of not presented well here. CAT is a cyber action team. It's a unit in the FBI, all right, responsible for cyber action. Uh, I wonder how, ma how much action did these guys get. Russia, all right. Russia is, is again, fairly well documented. The only problem with Russia is terminology. There's been a lot of movements there, especially post the, like the Soviet Union, whatever. Uh, so a lot, of, a lot of agencies got new names and split up and merged back. Uh, I'm just going to name the few that are actually active on that, uh, on that front. The GRU is the main directorate of uh, um, the Russian Armed Forces. Uh, they do a lot of uh, cyber espionage and, and foreign stuff. SVR uh, and FSB are uh, internal and external, uh, kind of the equivalent of NSA and FBI, to give or take. FSB used to be called the KGB, so uh, these, are, these are the same guys. Again, terminology. I love their logos, by the way. Really, really cool. I mean, if you could get those for, for laptop stickers, Please do. Uh, shoot me an email. <laughs> um, one of my favorite ag agencies is just called the Center for Research of Military Strength of Foreign Countries. All right? So there's no hiding about it. It's, it's like me walking yesterday in Vegas with an I'm a liability t shirt. It's like, you know, no surprises. <laughs> um, and the last but not least, uh, there's a thing in Russia called NASHI, uh, it's the National Youth, Youth Associations. Uh, there are several of these. They're, they're kind of political party for teenagers or uh, I don't know. Um, it's kind of a Boy Scouts but with a political flavor on, uh, into it. Um, tightly coupled with the actual political parties, if you can say that, uh, in Russia. And these guys carry out a lot of uh, actions that the party wants them uh, without being directly connected to like government decisions. So remember these, we're going to talk about them in, in like 20 minutes. China. There have been enough talks about China. Um, again, read the Northrop Grumman report. It's got a lot of information that was kind of available before, but they just kind of concentrated it and, and summarized it very, very well. Uh, some people call it old. I'm, I'm, I just tell them, you know, read it through. Uh, because it's got a lot, of, uh, a lot of scattered information that was available before, so it might be a little old, uh, but in a very well-formed for manner.